We are giving thanks to workers on the front lines of the COVID-19 pandemic. That's this week on a very special Thanksgiving edition of Nevada Week. Support for Nevada Week is provided by Senator William H. Hernstadt and additional supporting sponsors. Our Thanksgiving holiday activities and protocols may be different this year in the midst of a COVID-19 pandemic, but the true spirit and traditions of Thanksgiving endure. On this special edition of Nevada Week, we'll take a sidestep from the policy conversations we typically have on the show maybe a little bit of policy there, but instead the majority of what we want to talk about is giving thanks to the multitude of Nevadans who are sacrificing their personal health, their personal finances, and their time to better the lives of their fellow Nevadans. Now, while our panel seats are limited, our hope is that the thanks that we can give and the stories our panel shares here are representative of all our workers and our volunteers out there fighting for our safety and security during the pandemic. We are extremely thankful to have joining us for this conversation, Michelle Rothstein, founder and owner of Balloons with a Twist. Geoconda Arguello Klein, secretary and treasurer of the Culinary Workers Union Local 226. Jill Hersha, literacy services manager at the Las Vegas Clark County Library District. And Dottie Grillo, director of the Medical Surgical Nursing Unit at Sunrise Hospital. Well, Michelle, Jill, Dottie, Gio, we're so really happy to have you here. I've had the opportunity to speak to each and every one of you prior to our conversation here to kind of prep for this. And, you know, you guys come from diverse backgrounds. You have diverse roles in the way that you've, um, you know, kind of uh, uh, responded to COVID-19. But you all share very similar in how you epitomize the dedication and the sacrifices and the impact really in responding to COVID-19. And I wanna start with that. Let's talk more about your work. Let's learn a little bit more about your work. And Dottie, let's start with you. During this Thanksgiving season, as you kind of reflect back on the last eight or nine months that we've had here during the COVID-19 uh, pandemic, the work that you've done, the work that your team has done, what, what are you most thankful for? I, I think back on May 19th, when we discharged our 100th patient, I don't think any of us knew what we were in for. Um, here we are now, it's November, and many months have gone by. At this point, Sunrise Hospital and Medical Center has already discharged over 1,033 patients. Our, our hospital, everyone in our hospital, from the kitchen workers to the transporters to the nurses to the doctors to the engineers, it doesn't matter what department you are, they really epitomize our mission, which is together we are community dedicated to healing. And I, I think the thing that touches me the most is how our community supports us. Um, musicians on call do video concerts for us to keep everybody positive and keep us going. The, um, the community at large, I can't tell you how many restaurants dedicate food for the staff that are on that are working every day with these COVID patients. It is, it is heartwarming to see our entire community come together and work together and support each other. Uh, we don't I mean, know when this is gonna end. You know, it, we don't know when it's gonna end, absolutely. And I mean, you, you've touched on such an important piece of, uh, of this pandemic is by the nature of the pandemic, you know, we, we can't interact in the same ways that we, we've been able to. Um, it's so great to hear the community support that you're getting outside of the hospital even. Amazing. Michelle, you have a similar story here. You're, you're a small business owner, of course, a small business that um, has been affected as any small business would through the recession that we kind of find ourselves in right now, but even more so being that you are so dependent on events. Um, but you've always had a community focus in addition to the work you're doing, and you've kind of connected those two things. Can you give us a little more detail on that? Well, you know, in March when uh, everything happened, um, the events obviously stopped. So, you know, I had to let my team go, uh, my sales team, and uh, I had to really uh, reflect and sit back and, and decide what my next step was gonna be. 
And one of the things I really tried to focus on was the nonprofits and the things that I did have control over. So I did start uh, reaching out to some of the nonprofits, which are in such a big need right now. Um, they're all struggling. They're all in need of, uh, of financial um, assistance as well as in-kind donations. Um, and so, you know, they were having some events. They, they were putting on some, some different um, fundraising events or situations drive through camps that we did, you know, we did for St. Jude's Ranch for children. They were still trying to uh, continue with some sort of normalcy during this unprecedented time. And so that it was something that I could do to give back, something that I could do to participate and, um, and help out with. So we did do some of those kinds of events. In, in your business yourself, I mean, you know, I, I would I would probably argue there's no small business in Southern Nevada that hasn't been affected in some way, shape or form with COVID-19. But your business specifically, as you mentioned, you know, you, you, you've had to go through layoffs and, and things like that. I, I mean, talk about now, though. Where, where, where are you? You know, how, how are you doing? How are you surviving? Absolutely. So. You know, we've been through, over the last 26 years I've been in business, we've seen a lot of things. We've seen 9-11, we've seen 1 October. Um, our city and our country has gone through multiple changes. Um, and this is, uh, this is a big one. Um, and in this time, you could either crawl under a blanket and say, you know, I'm in the event world, I'm done. Or you can pivot, and that's what we've had to do over the years is you have to take control over the situation, over what you have control over, instead of concentrating on the things you, you have no control over. And that's really what we've done, um, especially in my company. Um, you know, it's a little humbling. I'm, I'm answering the phones again and giving quotes and typing invoices as a business owner for 26 years. I'm, I'm the most uh, invested in my company and I'm certainly not gonna let it go under in any circumstance. So I'm going to do everything I can to salvage um, something that I've poured my heart and soul into for the last 26 years. So over the last few months, we've um, kept alive by doing drive-through graduations. And, you know, there was Mother's Day and Father's Day, and we've just had to, you know, adapt, you know, contactless deliveries um, and, you know, drive-by celebrations. Um, yard art, you know, we're just getting creative and we're, we're, we're thriving in, in instead of just surviving. G getting, getting creative and, and reinvesting in yourself. And as you said, you're thriving instead of surviving. And Jill, I want to talk about what the library district is doing too. Such a multitude of resources and services the library district offers. We've had you on the show. We've had the library district on the show many times and we've talked about all of those. And here we have a situation where we have 300,000 uh, Nevadans that are that are out of work. Um, what kind of services does the library district offer, and what have you been able to do uh, to really help maybe some of those displaced workers that we've had over the last several months? So um, obviously, the library has lots of resources for anybody who finds himself out of a, a job or finds them unemployed during this difficult time. Um, and my program specifically, uh, we work with adults who are uh, who find themselves in that place um, and have maybe some deficits. Maybe they have never gotten their high school equivalency or their high school diploma, or maybe they still need to learn English. Um, so we have really, um, you know, had to take a time of, uh, you know, not being able to have any classes or anything and. Um, pivot and create those, learn how to do virtual classes like on the spot. So, um, you know, my team did that. And so we're, we're reaching out to, um, but we were also have um, close connections with the workforce, um, you know, um, group here in, in Southern Nevada. So um, with workforce connections, and we're part of that under the Workforce Innovation Opportunity Act. So um, we have those connections, so they're sending people our way, um, you know, because, you know, so many people have found themselves unemployed and know that they can't even get back into the uh, a reasonable paying employment field without that high school diploma or high school equivalency. So um, we've really worked hard to do that as well as the library, you know, opening up. Um, in the mornings early for the, the students. Um, they're trying to do whatever they can as a library district to, you know, promote um, people refocusing and figuring out 
like uh, Michelle says, you know, pivoting. <laughs> How do we pivot? And and we want to support them in everything we can. Yeah, so. and we'll, we'll talk we'll talk more about the, the long term impact there too, because this isn't something obviously that's immediate. You know, if we're following any of the local um, projections here, uh, you know, right. our, our our recovery is going to take multiple years, um, and and of course we're going to have a lot of employees that are displaced. Gio, let's talk about some of the employees that aren't displaced that are working right now in uh, our resort um, our resort industry. Um, Culinary Union has done so much to protect those workers. Tell us a little bit about what you are, when you're kind of, same kind of thing I, I asked Dottie here, when you're reflecting back on the last eight or nine months, what are you and what is your team most proud of, most thankful for? Uh, we are very sensible, you know. Um, we were really hard you know, in focus how to protect the health of the workers they going to go back to work in the industry and we have we we have putting a, a team uh to uh you know to put together what is the best health and safety regulation to protect these workers with the COVID-19 what is a big challenge for us because you know everything is so different right now with the pandemic and we will have to be creative uh, we have thousands and thousands of conversations with workers. So we have caravans. Uh, we focus on how we can protect people with wearing their mask. And we uh, really did a, an incredible push in the city uh, to figure out to how they passed the, the first legislation to protect 280,000 hospitality workers, union, no union. You know, because uh, here it is uh, the community where we're trying to work together to go through this pandemic. And uh, we feel very thankful and proud to have the first legislation to protect this work with the COVID-19. People now, they had to be testing, uh, they had to pay for that. And, and if they got COVID-19, they're gonna pay for their quarantine days, you know, and they gonna, uh, we have, uh, the cleaning had to be a deep intense cleaning and the and room daily cleaning in the places. And we feel like uh, now the tracing, the, the, the train, training the manager, the companies, uh, they work uh, now with this uh, legislation. Uh, members, they got training too. We have a thousand shop stewards. A lot of them, they are still in layoff. But we have some shop stewards they back too. Uh, we have hundreds back to and training them to be sure to they learning what is the right with the COVID-19 and try to figure out people know. And this is protecting here the Clark County and Reno. We feel very, very uh, sensible because uh, that's uh, helping the entire community, you know, um, wearing masks. I think uh, work with the governor too. Uh, and try to have this legislation and it's the first legislation in the entire country. We feel yes, very successful. Absolutely. And as you said there, I mean, the, the, the first to have that legislation in place. And I, I wanted to mention and, and give some acknowledgement too that that bill is the Adolfo Fernandez bill. Adolfo um, Fernandez that, bill. Correct. It did pass away uh, due to COVID early on here. So um, wonderful that the bill is named after Adolfo too. Uh, let's let's talk more, you know, outside of your own sectors here. Dottie already talked about this, and, and Michelle, you've talked about this too, the, the, the larger community here. In your day-to-day, -day, we're all experiencing this. You go to your local supermarket, you know, um, you know or you're, you're going to maybe get, you know, work done on your car, and there's people that are there that are putting their lives at risk for, you know, the most day-to-day -day, uh, services that we have. And when you reflect on that, I'd like to know, and, and Jill, let, let's let's get your perspective on this. You know, outside of your sector, your day-to-day -day lives, who and what are you most thankful for? Um, wow. Um, you know, I'm very thankful for, um, you know, the, the family that I have. Um, I happen to be single, so I, I stay alone a lot <laughs> in this time. I've kind of been sequestered to my house. Um, so those relationships, but I am from a big family, so... On that FaceTime, I'm happy that we have FaceTime so that we can have those conversations and, um, you know, the ability to now um, order from Amazon or have things delivered so I don't have to have um, you know, exposure to anything like that. But um, that is really, you know, and, um, you know, we're limited to how much social interaction you can have. And um, so that's just 
I'm thankful for the people I have in my life um, that reach out to me um, and that I know that I can call anytime when I need to talk because my dogs don't talk very much. <laughs> so anyway, um, you know, and like I said, I do try to stay in. And so um, I limit my, my grocery shopping um, and I avoid the long lines. If I see a line, I go home. <laughs> so, you know, relying on that delivery aspects. And so I'm very, very thankful for that opportunity that we have nowadays um, to do the contactless purchases and things like that. So I think that's yeah. one of the biggest things for me. It's amazing to think if, if we were dealing with a COVID-19 uh, pandemic like this 25 years ago, uh, what how different that would be in the world that we live in that's been able to connect us so much. And, um, you know, in, in a similar similar way, you know, to what we're talking about here, uh, because our public education system is dealing with distance education also, and of course has to use that technology to teach our children, our teachers, uh, our administrators, uh, our students even are dealing with so many of their own challenges here and out of those challenges come heroes as well and we had the opportunity to go visit booker elementary school and talk to one of those heroes the nevada state teacher of the year let's take a look at that The classroom now is certainly different. Um, in a virtual setting, there is a new elements that we have to consider as educators. We have had to employ a lot of new and different strategies, a lot of new technologies um, in order to make virtual learning work. And that's a thinker. If anybody has some ideas, you can share now, but we'll come back to that question later. But just like in the classroom, knowing our students, connecting with our students, and making sure that our lessons are really engaging, really speak to our students is just as true as it was before. Whether it's working alongside the leadership team or co-planning and co-teaching with our pre-K and special education teachers, her commitment to increasing student achievement and building teacher capacity is evident in all that she does. To be recognized as Nevada State Teacher of the Year is a tremendous honor. Um, I take it with a great amount of responsibility to be able to represent our entire state, all of the teachers, the students, and the families that we serve. For Juliana, we love having her as part of our Booker team. She is a huge asset to our team and we just love having her here. To the Booker staff, Every day in all that they do, they do so much to support our vision of all students can learn and succeed. And we see their hard work and we appreciate it so much. Well, thank you. And since this is our special Thanksgiving episode, I wanted to thank our production team for putting that clip together. Wonderful job. Uh, I wanted to switch the conversation. It's so much about Thanksgiving, of course, is synonymous with family. And uh, when we're looking at our family and our Thanksgiving preparations this year, of course, it's not going to look the same as it does in, in any other year. But I think the concept of th family might have changed too. And Michelle, I wanted to ask you, has the concept of family changed for you over the last several months? Absolutely. I'm really grateful that I live with my fiance. Um, in, we, we both worked outside of the home. He traveled a lot and I worked at my office. And now of course we're both working from home. And so it's really um, been, an amazing source of gratitude that I have him in my life because I don't know, I, I seriously feel for my single friends um, that, that are alone. Uh, also my family, you know, I, I have a big family. I have two brothers, two sisters, and my dad who lives in North Las Vegas, who's a little bit older. Um, so he's uh, at home most of the time. And um, we have started this family like, Zoom call at 1111 every day. And anybody that's available can just hop on the call and say hi and check in. 
you know, I talk to my family every once in a while before, certainly not on a daily basis. So I would say if one good thing has come out of the pandemic, it has definitely been this sort, this sense of family togetherness and uh, it's really unified us and um, just really grateful to have that every day. And Dadia, I want I want you maybe to, to reflect and talk a little bit more about the the family, the, the larger family at a, a hospital like Sunrise. You've already talked about it a little bit of just how extensive that family is. Um, but you, the, the emotions that you are dealing with on a daily basis, of course, are heightened beyond what most of us are dealing with in our own personal lives or our own work lives. Can you talk a little bit about how important that more extensive family is uh, to a nurse at Sunrise? Well, to a nurse and personally to me, my Sunrise family is everything. I mean, well, I live with my, my husband, who's my best friend. We've been together forever. <laughs> my grown children are, are local, so we get to see them because they're in the same type of field, so we're all at the same exposure level. Um, I don't think that I would have been able to get through one of the most difficult times of my life in this past year if it wasn't for my Sunrise family. Uh, I'm originally from New York, and my mom, who was in an assisted living, uh, one night got taken over to, the ho to their local hospital where my brother actually works. And within minutes, she was diagnosed with pneumonia, and then she was diagnosed with COVID. Within three days, my, my mom passed away. And I couldn't travel back to New York to be with my brothers. I couldn't be at my mom's gravesite when they laid her to rest. If I didn't have my Sunrise Hospital family to support me, I could not continue to come in every day and care for these patients and look at them and say, you're not with your family, we can't let your family in. I, I wouldn't be able to do that if I didn't have my Sunrise family to hold me up. And I'm not the only one. There, one of my CNAs, she just lost her sister. Another one of my CNAs just lost her mom this past week. And we all support each other. We all hold on to each other because it's it's very challenging to care for these people. I'm, I'm opening and closing COVID units. I'm, I'm working with COVID patients. I'm working with their families. It is, it's very challenging to see this disease and see how families can be together. So we're their families. We, we have to be there for them and give them the support that they, that they need so they can get through these difficult times. Yes, a hundred percent. And Dottie, we, uh, you know, I, I, I'm sorry for your loss, but it's such a, it's such a great point, um, especially because here in Nevada, we have so many residents that come from other states and a lot of times their family is in another state and they could have relatives that, um, you know, that, that are sick um, or have passed away and, and you don't have that connection it is so, so important. We, we have a, a couple more minutes left, and, and Gio, I wanted to go to you. I wanted to talk a little bit about the future. Of course, we've already acknowledged a little bit of the loss that we've had here. Um, another loss is we've talked about a little bit already is just the unemployment we have, and so many have been unemployed in, in your sector there in hospitality and gaming. And you know, I want to talk a little bit about the future as we look towards the next several months or several years to mitigate our losses a little bit what are you most hopeful for? Uh, right now, um, I, we have a lot of hope, really, you know, because we have a president-elect, uh, you know, President Biden, and we have trust in the vice president-elect, Kamala Harris. The union put up all resources in this election uh, to win this election. We have 500 canvassers. You know, over 500,000 doors, 132,000 conversation. Be sure people voting. But we need to have a COVID-19 relief now uh, for helping the family to go through the economic situation they're going through. And we need to have an ordinance from the Clark County Commission to protect people's jobs, union, no union jobs. And, you know, because uh, uh, people went through the pandemic, it's very tough situation right now in every home, in every home right now. You know, you have uh, single moms where they lost their jobs, but they going through the pandemic and going through the struggles. And I, I feel very sensible to see 
all these people mobilizing and doing everything to help the entire community. And I believe right now the president-elect and the vice president-elect, they had to move very quickly to give an economic relief uh, for Nevada and, you know, for the country to figure out to this family they can go and through and have the, their job secure at the end of this pandemic. Because, uh, you know, uh, when you are in unemployment and you have these struggles, we we have program with the Helping Hand program where we have, you know, we have food for, for the members who are working right now, over 137,000 baskets they've been given to the members. Uh, we have a lot of hope. And I think uh, that's immediately needs, immediately needs uh, what we need right now. Yeah, and, and, and hope is, is good. And you mentioned a couple key things there, both at the, the federal level, of course, of getting more COVID relief. And then, of course, um, even at the county level of being able to have some some programs that are going to protect our, our workers. A great, great points. Uh, Gio, Michelle, Dottie, Jill, thank you so much. Really appreciate you all sharing. And, of course, happy Thanksgiving. Thank you. Happy Thanksgiving. Thank you. Yeah. Happy Thanksgiving. And on behalf of all of us here at Vegas PBS, we thank you, all of you, who are putting your lives and your livelihoods at risk to keep Nevadans safe and supported. Many, many thanks to you. And thanks, of course, for joining us this week on this very special Thanksgiving edition of Nevada Week. Happy Thanksgiving and take care. <laughs>